going on guys welcome to po boys and in this video we're going to be talking to you about this here beauty right here this is a 2010 6 4 power stroke 4x4 110,000 miles on it this truck is pretty much pristine and I'm gonna show you a little bit about it let's go ahead and start with obviously the truck is in amazing condition and this is my dad's old truck he recently passed away and now I have the truck so I'm gonna be driving it and babying it for the time being until I can figure out a way to get something better why would I want to get something better because it's a power stroke and it's a 6 4 power stroke but I'm gonna give you all some more details on that stuff here in just a second but first off, let's go ahead and get a look as far as the inside of this thing is literally pristine. It's a Lariat, it's got 4x4, the whole entire truck is leather, nice heat, nice AC, everything on it works except for the tire pressure sensors. I'm not worried about it, the tires all have good air in them, but that's the only thing that I don't have working on this truck. The rest of it's super clean. If you look in the bed of it, everything here is completely clean. I don't know if you've seen a bed liner from 2010 that looks this good, but it literally doesn't have a single like hole in it or anything. There's no rust on this whole entire truck. We put taillights on it, we put headlights on it. This is the truck that I originally put bigger turbos on and did a whole bunch of work deleting some things that make these trucks pretty bad. So, without further ado, why would someone not like this power stroke and why do people say that these things are ticking time bombs? Let's go ahead and take it into the shop to show y'all why so. What's poppin'? So, when we first got this truck, my dad bought it, and it was actually my first YouTube video, which is kind of funny. My first YouTube video started out rather interesting because we picked up the truck, and my second video started. That's when we first started having problems with these things, known as 6-4 power stroke problems, which are the best thing in the world because these trucks are known to be bad. And we actually had a problem with the turbos on this truck going out, which is a very common problem. Those turbos go about 100,000 miles just because they're not known to be good, and you want to replace them, and you want to delete everything on the truck, which isn't really legal to do in every state, so pretty much in order to have these things be reliable, you have to delete them. However, when we first got the truck, it was not deleted, so we had our issues and the truck ended up blowing up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Billy got wings. He's our knockoff Red Bull sponsorship because he's got wings. Oh, is he gonna get out through that little hole? Ooh, what's Billy gonna do? What's Billy gonna do? Oh, does that mean we're gonna have a shot bird now? He's a camera shy, guys. Give him a minute. All right, so the first problem this truck had, I was driving down the road and I heard a sound that was kind of like, every time the turbos would spin and that's not a sound you really want to hear you want to hear the nice and it was like a metal digging away at something what was happening is the turbos weren't getting enough oil and the turbos had cavitated enough or there was possibly diesel in the oil and the turbos did not have enough oil in the bearings so the whole entire shaft was playing which i have that wait one second never mind all right oh, really bad. all right these what's called 6.4 power stroke turbo snail. They used a company called Borg Warner. I like my buddy Garrett, but I want to show you why this turbo failed right here and why power strokes do that is if you could see that whole entire turbo shaft has that much play in it, which is completely insane. Way more than you should have. So I'm gonna go over to this turbo, which is the bigger one of the sequential. You can see that it just barely, barely moves around just enough to where there can be a little oil coat that keeps that, that whole thing straight. So this still spins and still works great, but this one, will completely destroy your vehicle. And if I was to run this truck when I was hearing that sound, it would throw metal shavings all in my intake and it would basically blow the truck up. But this is one of many, many, many reasons that this truck can randomly explode and have a catastrophic failure and leave you stranded anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you some of the rest of those just in case you have one of these or if you were considering buying one of these things. And on these guys, engine pop right there. Literally take your hand and slice it and you'll hit it and you got the engine pop. It's literally like a little finger piece. Ford make opening the hood on these things really easy because you need to do it a lot. Installed with every Ford power stroke is a nice little step right here that you can use as a tow hook whenever you break down, but they also make it as a step as well because they know you're gonna need a step here. They give you a nice whole shelf. Just make sure you don't kick the intercooler or radiator with your feet and you'll be set. So with the first thing on this truck, these are the turbos right here. This is the most annoying job to do with the cab on the truck that you can possibly do. And the reason why is because you have to get to bolts behind and under the windshield from under this cover right here. And with the way everything works under this truck, it's almost impossible to get your tools back there. So it's a very, very hard job to do. Another thing is you want good air intake, which we put an edge cold air intake on this thing. And we also put an edge four inch exhaust. So now the truck breathes good and it also can let that air that it breathes in out. The biggest thing on these trucks that causes the most issues is the DPF, EGR, 
and EGR cooling system. So what the truck does in order to stay clean for the environment, does a cycle called regen. And the cycle called regen is basically dumping a lot of fuel into your seven and eight cylinders, which basically puts so much diesel in there, it burns it off so your DPF tank can go ahead and burn off all the coal and soot that's inside of it, which basically makes your exhaust have a lot less emissions, but it kind of kills the trucks because it puts a lot of diesel inside of your oil. Diesel is a lot thinner than oil is, and diesel will not give the lubrication properties that these trucks need, and this truck needs a really good oil in like 5,000 mile oil changes if you want to keep it good, which is why I'm going to go ahead and do that in every 5,000 miles, do a complete oil change, oil flush, coolant flush, and all fluids because you want everything to be brand new because if it starts getting worn down, these trucks have a bad top end, which basically means that the valve rockers, the rocker arms, don't get enough oil like they should, and they're gonna wash down over time, and those rockers will have a lot of play in them, and that basically takes the truck and renders it useless because your valves and rockers won't be working and they'll be way loose, which will basically take your truck and make your gas mileage terrible and end up eating away your engine. So that's also another thing that's really bad. So the 64 Ford is an engine that pretty much was cut cost all the way through. They wanted to make the cheapest engine that had the most power, so they tuned them really hot. Like these trucks are pretty much like the most you can get out of it is what they come from factories. So once you tune them, you have to literally build them in order to be able to handle it. The wrist pins don't have a bronze coating on the rods where it connects to the wrist pin. There's not a bronze coating, so those are bad. You can't reuse a piston if you have to rebuild the engine. Also the valve guides inside the head where the valve goes down and there's a piece that should hold it. There's typically a bronze bushing there that helps with the friction, that helps with these things kind of stay together. And this is all steel and steel on steel contact with not that much oil, which these trucks are bad for having oil getting around places. The whole entire truck will pretty much just fall apart and loosen over time and you can't rebuild something like that. That's an entire new set of heads that you have to get. So which is why online, if people talk about rebuilding a 6.4 power stroke, there's one part number and that is a completely new 6.4 engine. So these engines are not known for being good, but you can do a lot of things to make them actually reliable. So let's go ahead and get started doing that. Another bad thing on these trucks is the water pumps. And one way to get around that is using a completely separate water pump from the block water pump. The reason why is because the fans inside of there are so big and the water pump, which is the actual propeller, is so big that it takes material out from the faceplate and literally will dig so much material out that it will mix your water and oil, which is literally terrible. That's, that's blowing up an engine. But that's a stock flaw from the factory. And if you get water in your oil, then you're 10 minutes away from having your engine lock up and buying another $20,000 engine. Oh, the fuel system on these trucks, which we already know is kind of ass. There's no other better way of putting that than it's just kind of bad. What you need to do is take the stock fuel pump out of the truck, get a fast pump or a lift pump or an air dog or something like that and use that to get the fuel out of your tank because these trucks are known for having issues with the fuel level and the fuel sender and all these issues with the fuel diesel water separator. That was my first issue with this truck and it gave me a hell of a time out of town because I I was not able to do anything and the truck was just sitting there just puking fuel out of the bottom of it. So that's something that you want to get changed and you want to get those parts out of there because it's all cheap Ford plastic and when you put cheap plastic under a vehicle it's just going to break away and it's going to get brittle and it's not going to do what it's function to do. So it's just all kind of design flaws that this motor company doesn't think of but most others do. So Damn. I'm not lying. No, Everyone's no. going to agree. <laughs> so then two more things about the exhaust on this truck is the exhaust back pressure tube, which is a tube that basically senses the back pressure in your truck and that basically tells it how to tune it, how to do different things because it senses some back pressure and it also, it takes that and adjusts the tune for it for the amount of back pressure that it has. The problem is those get covered in soot and the sensors get covered up because what happens in the diesel truck? There is coal and coal filling up this tube attached to your exhaust pipe. The truck will run terribly. You have to take apart most of the front end in order to fix. Another thing on these trucks is they're Ford. I can't explain this enough. They're just cheaply made and whenever people have problems with these trucks going up and down hills and their frames have articulation, what happens is it'll take this point right here and this point right here and it'll crush them together. And what happens to be sitting in between all of that? A radiator, condenser, intercooler, main things of your vehicle that have to be intact and have to keep things cool. And if they're not intact and don't take, keep things cool, you're gonna have problems. It's literally gonna squeeze them until they have a crack or a hole, which is why you wanna make sure you change your cab mounts and really just don't don't dog on these things. They're not made to freaking go off-roading and go jumping and do articulation stuff. They're made to tow your vehicle. So if you were able to get this thing good miles, good condition, just like this truck, 100,000 miles, what I would recommend the most is obviously cold air intake, EGR delete, delete everything you can if it's legal in your state, which is legal in my state. I'm happy that I can say that is it's okay to do that stuff with the tune because we don't have emissions. So the truck is tuned, don't dog on it. If you have the truck, don't floor the pedal. Like I literally half throttle, will spin the tires at any speed on this thing. You really don't need all that power. And since you have it, don't use it because it'll end up blowing the truck up. So if you can keep the truck completely safe and then make sure you change all your fluids every 5,000 miles. These are brand new bigger turbos that obviously we put bigger ones on because who wouldn't put bigger 
turbos on when you have to replace your turbos. Also make sure that you have a complete like overlook on your truck. Pretty much every week, you have to make sure that everything's intact and everything's good. And I recommend a code scanner. And if you want to get one that will work for this truck, you can use this code reader right here, which you can also use my code below, which will help you tell pretty much how to use these things because Power Stroke likes to be interesting and you can't use a code reader unless it's one of the really smart ones, which is bi-directional. And this one happens to be bi-directional. So that way you can tell the condition of your truck whenever you're driving down the road. And that way it won't leave you stranded if there is an issue. Okay, so after watching that, you might be a little discouraged on finding a truck like this. But like I said, if you can find a truck that's been babied pretty much its whole entire life and you do the mods that you need to do, which are deletes, you can't do it in your state, don't do that. But if you don't, just don't get the truck if you can't delete your truck. There's no reason to have this truck if you can't delete it because it's gonna blow itself up within 50,000 miles. So that's pretty much the thing about 6.4s, which is why this truck is kind of good because it's already deleted. All of the main catastrophic failures have already been dealt with on this thing. So all I have to do is drive it like a baby. If it gives me an issue, then I have to stop right then and there and I have to make sure I got that issue figured out before it ends up blowing up the truck. That's kind of how you own a power stroke in general. Like the easiest way to say that's how you own a power stroke. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and continue driving this thing around. If it gives me any more issues, y'all are gonna see it on the channel this thing's done me right so far it only did me wrong twice but i mean other than that it's it's gonna do me more right i hope i really do hope man i got the ford curse even the people in my comment section that were saying like oh the pose just he hates ford he's, he doesn't know what he's talking about at this point they're all like yeah you just have the ford curse and there's just nothing else we could say about it so one day i'm gonna try and get me a tundra until then i'm driving this thing around and then if one day i can get a tundra out of it i'm gonna be the most happy man in the freaking world enjoy my power stroke adventures with this thing So today we're gonna to be going out into the field as a rig welder. We're gonna be doing some welding with our custom mobile welding unit with Pose Mobile Welding Service. Uh, we're going kind of a kind of a ways. It's a it's a long trip to go do this uh, this customer's product. What's poppin'? How's it going, man? How's it going, Cameron? Nice to meet you. This is the welding truck. Man, it's got a stack on it. That's a nice setup right there. Yeah, it's a Kmart special. Eastwood or die. <laughs> Eastwood or die, pretty much. We already lined it up right here in the car and we took the header out of the car. We're gonna put this bung right here so Sean can finally tune his car because you can't tune a car without an O2 sensor. Yeah, can't tune a car yeah. without an O2 sensor. Sean's gonna cut that hole right there and then I'm gonna weld that thing in with this here welding machine. Pose Mobile Welding only like is in the shop, but that's about it. <laughs> Smell my burnt skin right now. Ryobi. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's go. Come on there. Oh, here's too long for all this shit. Can't like close the mask. All right, we're gonna tuck this O2 bung in, and Sean's holding it with his hand because we need to keep it in a steady place. And I'm gonna go ahead and weld it with just one glove right now, just to get it tacked in. I can't see shit through this thing. I think the battery died. Yo, Sean, can you put me in the right spot? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. All right, right am here. I good? No, no. <laughs> Stop. You're about to weld Sean's glove. <laughs> You're about to weld my finger. Right? <laughs> there? All right, I feel it. Yep. Right, it actually checked. <laughs> good shit. <laughs> That's what you call teamwork right there. Teamwork making the That is work. impressive. All right, let me hit that other glove. It just is on. It just, I can't see anything as soon as I flip it down. All right, well, got her tacked in place. Get this thing finished up. I really just can't see shit. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, nice rod. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Got that bitch turned up to 11? It's turned up on the highest setting. Mo better? Mo Oh, got a few dimes in there. Got a few dimes and a few boogers, but a few dimes and then boogers, so we got like 40 cents and a booger. <laughs> Our little halfway dimes, but at least Sean can take temperature. That works out. And by the way. What are you doing, buddy? Don't worry about it. Please check it out. So Carson's just got this new DJI drone. We're gonna fly it and see what it can do. It's literally like the same exact size as a little fake drone that I had, but that's the real version of it. That's the actual DJI version. I had the little worse version. Oh. It's got an automated takeoff sequence, bro. How sick is that? Okay, that's a lot cooler than the little drone, the little wish one. Bro, so we're in the drift car and the V6 runs flawlessly. That also does mean we do have to get rid of it eventually because... Oh, there's Joey. Well, we gotta get the V6 
six to take it out of this thing because we know that the LS was the, what we made this car for. <laughs> heat for her yeah like i said still doesn't have water in it you don't even need that bro what are you talking about i'm not trying to light it on fire before i do all that <laughs> it's still clean man this product really yeah, is even great better. that car was as dirty as it was left it for a few days and literally sprayed it with a power washer no problem at all this stuff literally comes right off and it looks brand new again that's crazy i know it's so sick mm -hmm. want to get some rollers forward. of the truck yeah we could so what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep a uh, good signal for the drone so I'm turning around. All right, now be careful. Battery level is low. The aircraft will go to the home point in 10 seconds. Oh, oh fucking get that bitch down. Get that thing down. <laughs> Pull over. Oh my goodness, that could have been bad. <laughs> Battery level low. Oh, there it is, way over there. I'm gonna drive to it. Catch it in the bed and just keep going. That'd be kind of tragic. <laughs> We literally haven't had a full charge on this battery one time. Literally just picked it up, flew it in the air a little bit, charged it for like five, ten minutes, and then literally rolled out again because that's yeah. all the light we had. That's, We've had this drug for the about shots an hour. We have. It literally just came off the FedEx drug. So, fresh. Alright guys, so you might be asking why I have sunglasses on inside. And it's because I got this guy right here. It's a laser. And this is a very illegal laser. And uh... So illegal, my hat's burning as we speak. So I wanna have everyone at the shop that is gonna be hanging out here doing stuff sign this here desk piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with doing that with the laser. It's gonna etch it just like any wood burning thing would do. And then just literally write your name. It smells really good. Oh yeah, it literally smells just like a campfire. This is one of those things that's like, I've always done it on pretty much everything. I do it on all of my hats. And it's just this little laser that I got from an Instagram uh, best caption contest like a long time ago when Instagram was like really new. And I was like, I'm just gonna use this thing the rest of my life because it's just so cool. This is what I've used to light all my fireworks and stuff. It freaking does the work, honestly. All right, so now we have Poe. Now we're gonna write Levi's name. You just gotta remember, you gotta be fast with it. There it goes. It got like progressively smaller as it went on. <laughs> it's hard, it's definitely hard to do. It doesn't look bad though. I like it. That's really fun actually. All we gotta do is just get the rest of the guys to put theirs on there and we'll have this whole like little signature board. A little extra touch of personality to the shot. 